Good evening, everyone. Welcome to USA Match Day press conference with coach Greg Berharter. Remember, we have a simultaneous translation available in Spanish and English. For questions, raise your hand or virtual hand and introduce yourself with your name and media. We are going to start with coach. He wants to say something. Thank you. Um, the worst thing to do against a, a 5-4-1 is, is give up an early goal. You see how um, they protected the lead and, and were very compact and very difficult to break down. You know, all I can do is, is credit the boys and um, credit their spirit and their perseverance because on a night when, you know, we didn't play our best, they kept going and going and going. And, um, you know, we got the goal right at the end, which is miraculous. You don't, you don't often get that. But then, then to keep going and say, okay, we're not going to penalties. We're winning this thing in regulation, I think is a true testament to um, the group we have. And um, really pleased with the effort of the, the solutions when they came on. And they, they clearly made a difference in the game. So um, re really proud of them. Hey, Steve Goff, Washington Post. Uh, Greg, um, the, the early goal conceded, was it, is there a lack of concentration early in the game? Was it, obviously this team's been very focused um, in every match. It seemed like uncharacteristic. How did, what did you attribute that to? Yeah, it was a poor play by, by a number of players. Um, we shut off, the ball got behind us on a throw, and I mean, the cross comes in. We have, we have plenty of numbers in the penalty box to defend it. The spaces were too big. And um, a really poor goal to give up. And you could see it wasn't, um, obviously it wasn't a great start to the game. Greg, uh, Jeff Carlo here hey, with Jeff. ESPN. Um, you talked about how difficult Jamaica was to break down, but how did you, what, what's your assessment of the way the team performed for the first 95 minutes? And then just as a follow-up and to confirm, Tyler was, was taken off, you know, for what reason? I just hoping you could elaborate on that. Um, so answer the Tyler question, we had a, a minute limit on him and we knew there was a potential that this scenario would arise and we planned for it and we took him off when the minute limit expired. Um, in terms of the performance, again, these games aren't always pretty. They're not always beautiful. You don't always play your best, but, um, you know, champions find a way to get it done and win. And, um, you know, that's what I think we're taking away from it. We have to improve, especially against a 5-4-1, which has given us problems in the past. To me, it's about speed of ball movement, combinations, particularly in wide areas, to get behind them um, and, and hurt the defense. And we didn't do that enough. When we did, we created chances. Uh, I think the expected goals was 2.6 or something. So we had enough there. But um, it, it wasn't, I don't think, it consistent enough. Was it too much one-on-one? I think uh, you can see that this team hasn't played together for four months. Right? I mean, it's clear. Like, it, m we need more of a collective game, more combinations, more, um, like, like the goals we scored, or, or the, the second two goals are, uh, you know, the result of guys um, playing off each other and, um, and combinations like we want. Thank you. Michele Gianone from Univision. Hi, Greg. Um, Hi. Can you share, if you can, or if you want, what was the message during halftime to a group? We got to raise the intensity. I think J Jamaica was out competing us in the first half. They were winning a number of 50-50 balls. So that's the starting point for us is bringing the, the, the needed intensity to the game. Second thing was we focused on wide combinations. We needed more numbers wide, right? They're back five, so they're sliding with their wing back side, center back, center mid, and winger. And, and they have four. We need more players. And the third thing was try to get behind them more. Uh, there, there are moments when um, they were open when we need to play behind, and there are moments when they're compact and the balls need to be more precise, but nonetheless, we need to get behind them. Coach, congratulations. Uh, Marvin Walters here from Fonside. Um, how do you write? Uh, late addition to your squad, he came up with a brace. How difficult would it be for selection when Josh is fit and ready? <laughs> Well, all a, all a guy can do is is what he just did, you know. And and he actually got a man of the match, coach's man of the match for you know for a good reason because you have to shake off the disappointment of not getting selected in, in the first place. Then you come into the group and it's always an odd feeling because 
um, you know, you feel like you're a second choice. Um, but, you know, when I called him and told him he wasn't in the team, the message was, listen, you're doing everything right. You can't do anything more, so just be patient. Um, this camp, we, uh, we opted for this. But when we called him to come in, and, and I'll share this with you, you know, he was on a plane or getting on a plane to go to du Dubai. He had a family vacation plan for the international break. And so I called him, and he, you know, he, he was like, "Oh, I'm at the airport, and my whole family's here. My, you know, my agent's already there, and, and my girlfriend's going. She planned the whole thing. <laughs> and uh, really, this this really happened. And so, I mean, what do you do, right? And I said, I can imagine. I go, Haji, I'm going to give you 10 minutes. I, I didn't give him a timeline, but I said, let's hang up and just just think about it, process it, right? I know it's a lot of information right now for you to handle. I know you got your parents, the bags are packed, and you're at the airport, but just think about it for 10 minutes and give me a call back. And he called me back and he said, I'm in. And when I heard that, you know, it really shows what type of guy he is, what type of character he is. I'm Greg, Paul County of Soccer America. Um, Gio played 75 minutes, um, which is basically what he's played all year, both with Dortmund and and for us combined, can you speak a little bit about his game? It seemed like late in the game he was playing much deeper in some ways that sort of helped him and that both goals came when balls came to him. He saw the, the whole plays come forward and play great balls to Haji. Yeah, you know, I think I heard somewhere, read somewhere, why, why did Gio get called into camp? Did you guys hear any of that? Anyone? No? Well, I think he showed why he got called into camp. You know, amazing quality, amazing talent. Um, and, and for us, it's about supporting him through the difficult times of adapting to the Premier League. But his quality is it's unquestionable when you see the plays he made on, on both the second and third goal. But I think most importantly, the ball he wins, right, and then makes the pass. He has that quality that not many players have, and it's clear that um, you know, he deserves to play on this team. Sanjay from Backfield. Greg, uh, two questions. First one, you talked about the struggles with the ball, breaking them down. What do you think about without the ball, the counter press and, and the press in the first half when things aren't going right with the ball? How does that affect maybe what's happening without the ball? Yeah, I mean, we had the, we had the ball a lot. I think, you know, possession was like 78% or something like that. So we had a ton of the ball. There were moments where they tried to break out. I thought, by and large, we dealt with them well. Um, you know, the, for the center backs to cover that much space every single time they won the ball, it gets challenging. And, and I thought they did a good job with it, you know, probably 19 out of 20 times. Um, but, you know, the counter press is where we got our second goal. And I thought at times it, it was really good. But the idea, especially against a low team, is use the counter press to create your own goal scoring chances. And uh, we could have done that a little bit more. And your thoughts on Tillman's performance? Big opportunity for him tonight starting. Yeah, it was, and I think he had moments. Um, you know, I, I think everyone in the first half uh, didn't didn't play a great game. I don't think there was anyone that really stood out as being exceptional in the first half. Um, but he certainly had moments where he showed his quality, a big chance in the game. Um, you know, was able to, to dribble through slalom through other players. So he has quality. It's great to see what he's doing with, with PSV. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a performance. It's one that he can, um, you know, put in the bank and grow from. Yeah. Hey, Rick, Claudio Villalobos from Nashville Total Sports. How much frustration do you feel from, from the group at uh, uh, break time after 78% of the ball was yours to, you know, the first time and uh, first half, and then uh, the spaces were just not there? Yeah, you know, the pregame talk is, is the, the normal CONCACAF speech, right? It's not going to be easy, guys. It's going to be a very difficult game. And I think somewhere along the line that, like, it goes in one of their ears and then out the other one. They don't, they don't really understand it because this was a typical CONCACAF game. We've all been a part of a ton of these games. And, you know, you'll see this next game here what it's going to be. It's going to be one nothing for one of the teams or overtime and penalty kicks. Like, it's a, th these games are super competitive no matter who's on the field. And I think we just didn't really come to terms with that, especially in the beginning of the game. And when we did come to terms with that, when we started grinding, that's when we started getting the advantage. No, board NBC Dallas. Uh, your thoughts on the venue, how the surface played, and your thoughts on the, the whole city? 
this week with these four. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, there's a reason why Dallas is hosting, what is it, eight World Cup games, um, because it is, uh, has a great tradition of soccer. Uh, this venue is one of the best venues, I think, in the, um, in the United States. And the grass actually held up really well. The guys, the, you know, the guys said that it was, um, it's better than the surface that has the plastic underneath it, and they felt good. You can see the ball was a little slippery, but I think that's because it was wet a little bit. But it held up well. The guys had some positive feedback about it. Greg, Doug McIntyre, Fox Sports. You mentioned the message going in one, one year and out the other. This is not an inexperienced team in CONCACAF anymore. Um, you know, you've obviously won this competition two times in a row. Why, why do you think that it was hard for that message to sink in? I think it's normal. You know, the guys uh, have done a great job. They've been, they've been so focused. Um, you know, it, it, it's normal. They're, you know, it's not, um, you know, complacency, but they were so excited to get back and play together. You know, they think that, okay, it just goes by itself. But you have to invest the, the time in, in – um, in playing with each other, building these combinations, building these relationships on the field. And, um, you know, you don't play the game on paper. You have to actually go out there and, and compete. But, you know, the, guy, the guys, you know, showed to me, in my opinion, a lot of spirit. I think a lot of perseverance that I mentioned in, in the opener. And that's what I'm most proud of. We are going now with some virtual questions. Andrew Jones. Thank you very much, Greg. You had a smile on your face after that header for Miles and hit Corey Burke and went in the back of the net. Just your full thoughts on the emotions of that moment and as well as Christian having um, maybe the cramps here at the end of the match. Can you talk about his physical condition um, there? Yeah, um, it's, you know, it was literally the last second of the game, right? Maybe two seconds more, three seconds more. It was, it was unbelievable. You don't really expect um, all the time to get a goal from those situations, but that's why you prepare, you work hard, um, you know, you move everybody up in the penalty box and you pray. And, um, you know, fortunately we got the goal. Once we got the goal, we were pretty confident that we'd go on um, to the victory because of, of the spirit of the group. And Christian, you know, he, he did cramp up a little bit. I think a number of guys were cramping. And, um, but he, he hung in there and he showed why he's so valuable to this group. You know, he's another one that I think competed all game and never gave up. We are going with the two last questions. Kyle Bone, Kyle. And then we can. <laughs> uh, thank you for your time. Um, I, I got you. We'll, we'll get you out of here. Uh, when you have a certain tactical setup like that, 5 4 1 that you've acknowledged has been kind of tough for you guys, what, what's the process moving forward, knowing that some teams could maybe see that and identify it as a, a way to frustrate and, and bog down matches? Yeah, at first you can't give up the first goal in 45 seconds. You know, that, that can't happen. You know, that's – so you need to be switched on. And then it's just patient, patience, perseverance. We had, you know, how many 940 passes in the game? Um, so we had enough. But to me, it's all about what you're doing in wide areas against them. you got to draw them out of position. The, the other thing is there were moments to counterattack. There were moments when they actually came forward where there was space, and you got to be clinical in those areas. And then the third thing – um, is the counter pressing when you play balls into the box? Can you win them quickly and restart your attack? So it's all stuff we need. We need to keep learning from. The last one is for Charles Boom. Charles. Hey Greg, uh, Kyle just took my question, but uh, um, I just wonder if you um, could give any update on uh, Reina. Do you think he's fit to to play another match? Could he possibly start? And do you think that uh, we have the same minutes cap for Adams in the in the final? He, he played, um, we said 75 minutes, but he came in 60. Were you counting injury time? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we're 75 plus injury time. It's probably 80, 80 minutes, right, five minutes. Um, we're going to have to check. I hope he can play. But we'll have to check. With Tyler, you know, we had to get past this first thing, this first minutes limitation. Um, he will be limited for the next game, but it will be increased. So, um, you know, we'll probably use him. We conclude with this press conference. Thank you, coach.